For our inside of our album cover, we're going to make a double waterfall here. And then we'll have a pocket with a flip closure on it. And it will have magnets. So you're going to need two sets of magnets for this. Because it just works better with two. And then because I like the looks of it, we're going to add a seam binding tie over both of them as well. So first we need to cut our cardstock. To make the double waterfall, we need one piece of cardstock that's cut at, um, this is the base, cut at seven and five eighths by five. We don't do any scoring on this. Then we need eight waterfall flaps that are three and three quarters by four and we're going to put the four inch at the top here and we're going to score all eight at a half inch so go ahead and put your four inch again at the top score at a half inch on all eight flaps you're going to have four for each side of your double waterfall flaps Okay, once you have them all scored, then you're going to fold and burnish really, really well. Make sure you get it nice and straight for your waterfalls. Okay. So we're going to be working, assembling it on this base versus our um, actual book. So we're going to put this in. You want the, I'm going to start off this away. I want to put this one at the top. Make sure it's pushed all the way to the left, all the way to the top. This one's going to attach in right up flush against that. So I'm going to put glue on the flap on the back side here, just on that half inch. And make sure that it goes in really straight on the top and there on the side. I've got a little extra glue here, so I'm going to burnish and clean that off. Okay, so that's the one on the left. Okay, so the one on the right, when you put it on, it's going to have just a little bit of it, about an eighth of an inch space between them, so they're not attaching on each other okay so this one here i'm going to move it all the way to the right so i've got that flush up in that corner to help position it and then this one's going to go on at the top so it's real important that these two first ones go on really straight all the way in and on the edge straight across the top so let's take a look at it and make sure so it's straight there straight across the top and we've got the, about the same mount here in between so now we can put the other three on see how you have that little gap in there now it's hard to see here in this darker color let me hold it up you can see where my glue marks are right here where the cut edge of that first one you put on that's your placement of the next one same down here so you're going to glue the flap the fold of the hinge right up against that half inch one so i'm going to push this up in here so i can get this one on Make sure it goes right up against, it's hard to see, but make sure it's going up against the bottom edge of the one you've already put on. And that it's flush here and burnish that. Okay, so there we've got those two. I like to fold them up and check them, look at them. And this one, I'm going to turn it this way so I can kind of see it the glue on 
and make sure it is going right up against that last one straight here on this edge I'll lift it up and look at it make sure they're even so we've got that edge straight here. It's a little hard to see up here at the top, but uh, if you're not like me having to work on the camera, you can turn your scoreboard around so that you can make it easier to to see what you're doing. So we got it straight on the edge here and straight here. Okay. That one this way. And like I said, you'll have four on each side. Okay, last one. Okay, so when you fold them down, you're going to see you have about an eighth of an inch of the other bottom piece showing, and I'm okay with that. I'm going to leave that there. If I feel like I need to cut it off, I will later, but for right now, I think it's going to work out fine. I didn't want to make it too short in there, so I want it all to fit in. So next, let's go ahead and put some patterned paper on this. So let me grab these that I've pre-cut. I have cut 10 that are 3 and 5 eighths wide by 3 and 3 eighths tall. So it's a little shorter. So I have 10 of those. We need to ink those up. I cut 8. I think that's the correct amount that I'll need. 8 that are of the white that are three and five eighths by three and three eighths. These will not be inked. So I'm going to speed up the camera or the video and I'm going to go ahead and ink all these and get them ready. All the patterns glued on this one here that I glued on first was a little bit too short and I didn't like that so I cut a new piece out of scraps that I had so now we have all these <clears throat> matted in the next we're going to do the white so I'm just double checking my width and height so they're going to go one on each top flap so that's one two three four so yes you need eight so I'm going to glue those off camera and then uh, we'll be back ready to install this into the book Okay, so I almost didn't catch it. We do want a magnets in here. Now, it would have been better to put them on the front here under this pattern. If you haven't done yours, you can do that. But I'm going to be able to go ahead and put it on the inside here and then catch it with the closure. So we do not want to pattern these first two on the inside. We don't want to add our cardstock, our white. So we're going to set two of those aside. Now I'm going to go ahead and do the others, but I'm not going to do the top two until I'm ready to put the magnets in. 
So I just wanted to catch that real quick and let you know about that. Okay, on our closure flap that's five by five, you just need to score on one side at a half inch. And then for our pocket, which is eight and a half by three, <clears throat> I'm going to score it a half inch on the eight and a half inch side, and then at eight, turn and score on the three inch side at a half inch. Okay, since we're right here on this pocket, we're going to go ahead and trim our corners at an angle right where they intersect with where the two lines score lines intersect just go ahead and trim that this other way and fold this up and burnish and when this is folded it should not overlap so if it does a little bit I'm going to just trim a little more off and make sure that I get rid of that bulk so that's better Double check the other side okay it's fine okay so burnish that really well and then next we're going to make a punch out of it like we did on our pockets earlier with our punch envelope punch board So we're going to take this and we're going to put this in and put the folded in at two and a half. Flip it over, it will still have a folded edge. Put that at two and a half and punch. And then we're going to cut that out with a ruler and craft knife. Lay it across the bottom here where the little dip is, the lowest part of your dip, and just cut right across. Okay, so there's our pocket edge. A little bit here still hang over. I'm just going to trim it with my scissors a little bit. There we go. Okay, so there's that. And then we will work on the other pieces next. Okay, before we put the waterfall in the book, we're going to go ahead and work on our closure flaps and add our magnets. So for this, I want the pattern on the front. So I love this image with the flowers, and you have to measure it to where exactly where you can cut it to get what you want to see. So this is... Um, Pattern paper, you cut one that's four and seven eighths wide by four and three eighths tall. You could do two in pattern papers. I decided to go ahead and cut another one the same size, four and seven eighths wide by four and three eighths tall out of white. Now, this is going to go on here, so you want to angle punch your two top corners and then two of the two top corners of your white cardstock if you're using the white here okay so now we're going to we can go ahead and put the front one on because it doesn't need the magnet so let's ink that i don't know why i think this may be my favorite image in the whole collection it's just so pretty with those flowers and that watercolor look of that scene the building in the background just, just really pretty. So I really like that. Okay, so when we have that inked, let's go ahead and glue that one on the front, which means your hinge is folded in. And this is going to go on the front.
and burnish. Okay. Now we don't put this one on yet. This is going to fit in here. I kind of want it down, drop down a bit. So I can see the cherub. So that means it's going to go into the book in above the pocket. So let me see. I may have to just not worry about the... Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and push this all the way up. And then you will see the chair when it flips down. So I don't want it not fitting correct. So I am going to go ahead and put glue on the inside back of this hinge. See where it's opened up and I got the glue. And then it's going to attach to the bottom of my waterfall base right along the cut edge and I want to center it. So I'm, before I press down anything I'm going to go ahead and get this all lined up straight. Okay, press it down on the back and go ahead and burnish that. So that gives where our flaps going to be. Now for the magnets. So I'm going to have to do this a little backwards, so I'm going to grab some score tape to do that. Normally I use the sticky part here to, to attach it on. But I'm going to need to, let's see, attach it this way. The paper side down. That's going to be more to this edge here. So I'm going to go ahead and pull one backing off. The other one will be taped on because it's doing it on the back side. So I'm putting it about three quarters of an inch from the edge both ways. i use some tape on that to hold it in place. score tape right there on it and then take the other one peel the paper backing off of it and about the same there we go Now then, we're going to pull the tape off of these, but not attach them down to the flaps yet because I did these backwards. They should have been on the front side. But if you forget and remember in time, you can always still get your magnets on correctly. So I just put tape over it. To the sticky side because now then we're going to bring this up. It's a little more tricky here. I'm not going to press it down really. I'm just going to lay them, kind of lay them with the sticky part facing up. Catch this.
just having a hard time seeing where it needs to catch. Here. My finger about where it is. Sorry about that. I should have caught it and done it right the first time. There we go. <laughs> Got that one. I use my finger as the placement guide right about there. Okay, now I'm going to press it down, gently lift this one, and now this should be in the correct place on the back. So now we're ready to put our patterned paper. I'm going to remove the tape backing. So this one has the white mats on it. Make sure I'm going the right direction with them. Okay, glue these on. Burnish around that. Make sure you get around the magnet really good. Get everything down. that and then this one will go on here so we pull the tape backing off of these And there's the closure there. So now we're ready to uh, add our ribbon and start getting this in the book and also making our pocket. Okay, so I want to put a ribbon. You don't need it to hold this down. The magnets are going to hold your flap down. But I just like the way the ribbon tied looks. And so I looked at my seam binding ribbon, which you can order from Country Craft Creations. This is like a wine color, and I think that looks really good with the flowers. So I have about a yard here. I hope that's enough. Let me let me check. I may need more than that. Because I'll be sure I have enough to tie a bow. So let's see. So yeah, it should be just just enough okay so we're going to attach this to the back so i'm going to take some score tape and kind of just in the center it doesn't have to go all the way across it's right here and peel this off i just like to use the score tape to hold my ribbon in place until we get it glued into the book now I am going to tie knots in each end. If you want longer tails, then you might want to cut about, oh, an extra four. 30 instead of a yard, which is 36, cut maybe 40 inches, 42 inches for, for your um, ribbon. And it's easier to go ahead and tie this not on the end and the reason I do that is because it's going to fray I uh, don't like glue on the ends of my ribbon uh, seam binding ribbon because it makes it really stiff like so I tie it in a knot and then I let it go ahead and just fray itself right here on the end like that I don't 
make it, but you can. So it's okay for it to fray some. And it should not go beyond the uh, your the knot. Okay. So there's that. I'm going to go ahead and pull it up and tie it and see if I like that or if I want to add extra longer piece. I'm not going to have much of a tail. Okay, I am going to pull this off and use it later somewhere else and I'm going to grab a longer piece of ribbon because I want longer tails. Let me pause. And okay, so I took that other one off and I'm going to save it for tags or whatever I need it for. I'm happier with a little bit longer tail. So about 42 inches for your ribbon. And I'm going to make a note of that. Um, 42 inches seam binding ribbon for the tie. Okay, so now we have that. Now we're ready to <clears throat> do our pocket. So we've already did the cut here on the top and folded and burnished our pockets. So I have a piece of pattern paper that is, you want one that is seven and three eighths wide. That means the width of your pattern where you can look at it. And seven three eighths wide by two and three eighths tall. And now we need to punch the edge on this. So let's grab our envelope punch board. That's what you're using. And we're going to put these in at two and three eighths on the left edge. Flip it two and three eighths on the other end. Now we've got that in there to cut out with our craft knife. I love this paper with this uh, floral here on the side in the offset in the kind of brownish colors in the fading into that music. It's very pretty. Okay, so position this at the bottom of the dips. And take your craft knife and just hold your ruler real tight and cut it. So that should be good. And I'm going to ink the edges real quick. Go ahead and glue that on. Let's double check, make sure it fits right. Okay, looks good. Grab your glue. And position it on to the pocket and then we're ready to put these in our book so let's grab the book this is going to go on the inside back cover so first of all I'm going to position my pocket where I want it here on the right edge now you're going to have a space I believe 
tier of paper. So we need to cut a piece of printed paper to go into the pocket. So I want that to be seven and three eighths wide by, let's go ahead and just going to lay this out because this is going to fit up here at the top and this is going to fit here and this will be in the cutting guide. I'm just measuring it now but I will actually have it in there ahead of time. So I'm going to go ahead and bring it all the way down to the pocket and up underneath a little bit. So I'm going to cut it four inches by four inches tall. So seven and three eighths wide by four inches tall. Okay, so I've cut this piece that is <clears throat> four inches tall by seven and three eighths wide. I inked both sides. You don't have to do the top and the bottom because you're not going to see it. So I'm going to put it in this first. So I'm going to open up my hinges here. And on the inside, don't fold them down though, just put glue on your hinges on the inside. I'll show you with them opened up. See, they're opened up. Then take your paper, whichever side you like, and then slide that in so it goes all the way to the bottom. And I'm going to attach this down here and on the sides. Now that's going to keep things from snagging in that pocket when you're inserting it. Finishes it off like that. Now this is going to go down and we'll glue all of this down. So you glue the hinges and the pattern paper all at one time. Okay. So now we're going to put this in the cover and I am putting it down to the bottom edge and just a hair off the whoops the right edge of the cover. So I'm going to go ahead and burnish all that down. Inside here where's my longer bone folder? Use this down in there. There's our pocket. And then our waterfall is going to sit here at the top above it. So we have that space where you can see. So now all your glue is going to go on this back piece that you've already assembled. Bring it up at the top here. Pay attention to your direction, kind of to the edge, and make sure here at the top it is straight. You don't want it turn it so I can see it. Make sure it stays straight here at the top. About the same amount of spacing. Whoops. And over a little bit here on the side, about a sixteenth of an inch or so. Oops. And about an eighth of an inch from the top, kind of even with this paper that we already have on here. Okay, there we go. Now that I'm going to open it up and burnish on the inside. all the way up in here. You want to make sure that you have burnished this in so it's attaching to the book good. Okay. Now the next thing we can do is 
uh, if you've cut all your pattern papers or you can wait till you're finished with the page and everything but I already have mine cut these are little half inch well not half inch three about three eighths of an inch uh, scrap pieces that I cut to the width so these are cut let me see it's called matting for spaces between the waterfalls so you want eight that are three and five eighths wide by three eighths tall so I'm just going to glue these in and I didn't really ink them because they're they're little and they're not going to show that much so I just want to lay them in in that space to kind of finish that off if you don't want to you don't have to this is going to be totally up to you I like the look of that so you would do it between each one so I'm going to do that off camera and then we'll come back and be ready probably to start on the main page so I've got my little strips glued in and actually you only need six so that's what it will show on your cutting list you need six one two three four five six so this last one I is patterned all the way up so we didn't need that so those are done Flap down and tie this back up. Now for inside of here, I will be making those later when I do my decorating. So you're just going to want to look and see what you have left of your scraps of cardstock that you can make tags out of. Um, some of your pattern paper you want to add in there. Different things you may want to add into your pocket like you know photo mats with extra photos and everything so now we're ready to start on our main page so put the book away for now and I'm gonna grab all my stuff that I pre-cut for my main page okay so follow your cutting list for your cardstock for your main page remember we're only making one page but it's gonna have different elements on it and it goes on this one single hinge that we've already added in here in the book so we're only making one page so you need one piece of cardstock that is seven and a half by eight and seven eighths seven and a half by eight and seven eighths and we're going to score the eight and seven eighths side at a half inch on both ends so easiest way to score this side here give it a good score turn it all the way around and score again so this is going to make that pocket that slide on piece that slides on over our hinge and then we need one that is seven and a half by seven and seven eighths seven and a half by seven and seven eighths so we got that one no scoring on this one so let's go ahead and assemble this one I'll move my cardstock out of the way so we can fold and burnish so go ahead and fold up your half inch score lines here and burnish those really well and the other side Okay, so now we take that other piece that is the seven and a half by seven and seven eighths and you see that it's going to fit oops wrong way <laughs> it's going to fit right over these hinges so I'm going to open this up and I'm going to put glue on this side here it's going to fold down when we put this on and I'm going to go ahead and add this one on. I'm going to line it up here at the bottom and right along the fold. So just make sure it's lining up good. I'm going to burnish that down. Get it over. And then when we fold it in, then we're going to line it up on this other side. So you see your hinge folded down. Put your glue. Now you can use score tape on this if you wanted to. If you're more comfortable with that, but I do like glue. It has a little wiggle room when I'm putting it down, but it also glues really permanent. I'm not 
nothing's going to come loose on me. So then we line this up and burnish. And there we have our base page. Now we're not going to put any pattern paper on it until we're in the process of um, adding our string closure. Uh, we can go ahead and attach it to the main front side. So let me pull out my papers that I cut for that. See which one I like front. Love these clocks. These are gorgeous. So I'm going to double check this though. I'll leave a camera prototype just to make sure I'm not doing anything wrong. This slides in so that's okay. This attaches we need to add our flap first. So let's, we're not going to do any pattern paper yet. We're going to wait on that. So let's get in the front side flap. So we have cut one at seven and three quarters by seven and seven eighths. I have to double check with my ruler. Don't trust myself. That's the seven and seven eighths by seven and three quarters. Okay, that's what I thought. Um, we're going to score the seven and three quarter side so put that one at the top seven and three quarters we're going to score that at a half inch to get our attachment hinge there and this one we're going to have to add a magnet set before adding our pattern papers and we're also going to use our envelope punch board to add a notch or a thumb notch. So this is not going to be the long one that you're going to cut with your craft knife. We're just going to do what I call a thumb notch. So this piece is seven and three quarters. So three and a half is seven. Three quarters is there's my seven so I think it's three eighths I'm gonna look at it three and three eighths not three and five eighths I guess let me do some math here <laughs> sorry about that some fractions just kind of get too much to to figure. So it's three and a half. And that's one, two, three. Looks like three and seven eighths is the half mark. Double check it. I marked it at a half. mark there. It's almost four and like halfway in between. So you put it here on the four and then back it up just a sixteenth of an inch. That should work opposite your fold line. Oops, so that is go ahead and fold and burnish that. So that is our add-on flap here. And we're gonna find the pattern paper for that. So what this does is this is going to attach on right here to the front. And then you can see your notch here. So I'm going to go ahead and put glue on this because this one's ready to attach. And you want it along the open edge. 
And I'm just going to line it up here. I want it each end and along the edge. I want it nice and lined up straight and burnish that. And that adds your flap there. Okay. Okay, now we're going to add a magnet set. So we need a plus and a minus. And I put those two together. Peel the backing off of one magnet to one side. And we're going to put this on the inside of the flap. So we want to back it off from this notch a little bit, like about three quarters of an inch. So we can put our pattern, pattern paper there. Then we're going to take the backing off of this. And then we're going to close it up. Then let it catch. And then we're going to lift and add some score tape. Just over the magnets to hold them in place till we get that pattern paper on there. Okay. Still in view. So then that's our flap. This is going to be where our insert goes, and this will be where it attaches onto our hinge. Okay, so for our pattern paper, we need two that are seven and one eighths wide by seven and three quarters tall. So I'm going to pull those out of my papers. So for the flap here. We need two pieces that are cut at um, pattern paper 7 1 8 wide by 7 and 3 quarters tall. Make sure that height is right. Yeah, 7 and 3 quarters tall. Now I'm going to put this one on the front right here and then this one will go on the inside. So we need to do our notch Grab that again. Pay attention to the direction of which way. This one, it doesn't really matter. You can put the darker there at the right or down here at the bottom, whichever you want. So we're going to punch this on the side. And this is seven and three quarters. So that should be three and seven eighths. Let me look at that. That three and seven eighths should be the half point. want to make sure that I'm doing it. Yes. So put your line at 3 and 7 eighths and punch. And then this one, since it's going on the back side, we want it over here on the right of the pattern, 3 and 7 eighths. I've already inked these, except for the little notch. Let's see if I can get in there some. Okay, now then we're ready to glue these down because everything else is going to be built up on top. So we don't have to worry about that. So we're going to put, go ahead and put these down. So I'm putting this right here on this side. I'm going to open it up, flatten it out so I can see it good and double check it. Okay, so I'm going to use some glue.
burnish that down. And then flip it over, pull this tape backing off the magnet. And this is going to go right here. burnish it make sure you burnish that space between the magnet and the edge really good so there's the inside there and here we're ready to go ahead and put this one on Open it up and double check yeah because there's nothing that attaches to that so I am going to use the clocks on this inside piece Take this off and ink it if you haven't already. Oh, and these are the measurements. I suppose I should give you those. Seven and three eighths wide by seven and three quarters tall. Seven and three eighths wide by seven and three quarters tall. And you need two of these cut. I mean two different patterns you can choose which patterns you want to use but two pieces for the main page now we don't put the back one on yet we're just putting the one here on the inside okay so it's going to go right there I'm just double checking okay go ahead and put your glue on double check and make sure I didn't need a notch or something there. That one's just one big solid one with the magnet there so make sure you burnish to the side of that. I love those clocks. And luckily I didn't put it upside down. So then that closes up so you just see the edge of that green there and then that opens up like that with the magnet. So now we're going to save this one. This one is going to go on the back side because of the placement of the chair up there on the right. But we're not ready to put that one on yet until we're ready to assemble that. So let's make some more elements for this page. We need, we have the front side flap. Now we need an angle pocket. So this is going to be our angle pocket so we need one piece that is cut out at seven inch by six we're going to score the seven inch side at a half inch then we're going to turn and we're going to score the six inch side at a half inch then to make we're going to go ahead and miter this corner real quick where the lines score lines intersect just cut that out <clears throat> go ahead and fold this up make sure they're they're not overlapping okay burnish Let's see if I have got it here right in my book we're going to cut an angle, Oops, not on my book, but on my page, this way, and 
Okay, so I need to reverse these. We want the longest side to be our height of our pockets. So that's correct there. I'm just double checking with my, yeah. So you want it so that you have a hinge on your left and one on your bottom side. And you want this to be your longest one is going to be your six and a half. It's going to go this way. Double check that. So you want it to be five and a half across and six and a half tall when you have your hinges folded up. So now we're ready to do our angle cut. And we're going to make a mark. We're going to mark, take our ruler, and we're going to mark at the top. So with our hinge folded down, at the top we're going to mark, put a tick mark with our pencil, two and a half, and then at three and in, three inches here on the right side, which doesn't have a hinge. So you have a mark here on the side at three, two and a half here. What you're going to do, and I'm just going to draw it with a pencil you don't have to but from one mark to the other this is what we're going to cut away so do that on my trimmer so put that mark in there at the top and there at the bottom where the blade's going to go and I just cut that away and then if you have any pencil marks that you can still see, you can erase those. And we're going to make our, cut our pattern paper next. Okay, so for your pattern paper for the front of your angle pocket, you need one that is 5 and 3 eighths wide by 6 and 3 eighths tall. And I'm going to insert this into this pocket all the way down to the fold. And I'm going to take my pencil and I'm just going to draw this line right here. And you can cut it with your trimmer or with your scissors. And I'm going to cut to the inside of the line, about probably sixteenth of an inch or so. And then I'm going to double check to see how that fits. Now, this particular piece, I had cut it out wrong, so the directions is going the sideways, but I'm okay with that. So I'm just going to fit this on here and check and see and it looks like it's going to work so I'm going to ink the edges and we're going to glue this on here on it. Make sure my bottom is got a little bit of a border here. Okay, there we go. Burnish. So that is your angle pocket and it is going to go right in here on this page. I'm just going to glue these two hinges, fold it over on the back side. Okay, so this pocket I want it about three quarters of an inch 
from the left edge of the flap. Make sure we're here where you can see it. And about a half inch or so from the bottom. Doesn't have to be totally accurate. So it's about a quarter inch from that notch. I'm going to put it on straight here and then burnish your pocket edges. So now we have a pocket here. Burnish on that. That is open here and here. So next we're going to make a little library pocket that goes on top of that. Let me show you in the prototype. So you see here's the angle pocket here. And then we have this little, I call it a library tag pocket on top of that. And then this is where our magnet is going to go, is on top of that to hold this flap in place because this one you can remove. Okay, so let's do that and grab the cardstock for that. Library or tag pocket. So you need one at four and a half by six and a half and we're going to score the four and a half side at a half inch and then we're going to turn and the six and a half inch side we're going to score at a half inch and three and a half And then we're going to take our scissors and we're going to, I'm thinking right here, we're going to angle cut here at this intersection here on the outer edge. And that's going to fold up. Then we want to cut on each side of this, just kind of like at an angle, just up to your half inch score mark. Take out a little triangle piece right there. And we're going to fold one side, and then the um, the side here, this one here, we're going to cut the whole thing out. Forgot about that. We're going to cut right along that score line. I'll show you what it should look like. This should look like this. You've got your little tab down here at the bottom. You've got a tab here at the top. I'm going to do a little angle here at the top just to be on the safe side. So you have all that. Now it folds up, so fold your score lines. The half inch ones, tab ones go to the inside. And then the center one goes towards the here to make the pocket. Score that. Then before we assemble this, we're going to put a notch in it. Okay? So these are three inches. Yes, finish three inches. So the center of just, you just want the notch in one part, and I'm going to do it in the part that has the hinge. Take my envelope punch board. With the hinge folded, I'm going to put the folded edge at one and a half. So that's the center of three. Just one punch. Just like that, because you want it open here. Okay. Now then I want you to look for a little scrap of paper in where you've cut everything. You don't need a really big one, I don't think, unless you want to cover the whole section in here, which we can. We're going to put our hinges to the outside, though. Just like this and make this a pocket. So this one's off just a little bit. I'm gonna re-burnish it. See if I can straighten it up. It was off a little bit here at the top. And I'm gonna just trim some of that away. Maybe. Just a tiny bit. OK, 
Okay, so that's even. Now we want to put some pattern paper in here. So if you want to cut that the full size, which is four by three. So let's cut that three and three and seven eighths by two and seven eighths. So I took a scrap and I have cut it to two and seven eighths wide by three and seven eighths tall. I'm just going to ink the top edge because that's really all that's going to show. I'm using the solid piece to keep anything from snagging in there. So I'm just going to glue that on the piece without the hinges. Let's go ahead and put the glue on this. Glue that in. Now then take your glue where the hinges are folded in and open them back so on the inside so that it attaches to the back like that so your hinges are folded there so it's on the inside now open them back fold your pocket and then fold the hinges over and burnish so that seals up those um, it makes it so that it's the hinges are not uh, tags don't snag on it so there we have that and again I still have a little overhang here at least to my eye, I see it overhanging, and I don't like that. Okay. So you just barely see any of that patterned paper in there. Like that. Now, we're not going to put the paper on this yet, because we need to um, add our magnets. So I'm going to attach this. I'm going to glue the whole thing down with the notch side on the top. And I'm going to glue it about a quarter of an inch from the left edge of the pocket and about three quarters from the bottom. So I'm just going to put glue all over the back to secure this in place. So like three quarters from the bottom and a quarter from the edge here. Put it on straight and burn that down. And we'll have tags that we'll make that go inside there. So next we're going to make our flap piece so we can get the magnet onto this. Um, I think the magnet's going to hit about right here. So I'm going to go ahead and put it on. I don't forget it. I'm going to put it about three quarters of an inch from my notch edge. I'm going to peel, pull that magnet off and put some score tape there. And I'm going to put this magnet back down. And that's what will attach to my flat piece. So let's, let's work on that one next. Okay, so I've got my, I had to clean my scoreboard off. We have the flat piece flap piece cut which is by 12 we're going to put the 12 inch at the top it's real simple we're going to score the 12 inch side at seven and then at seven and an eighth just just one little notch over okay, then we're going to fold this so I'm going to fold the first one, and then I'll fold the other one from the other direction. It's a little tricky folding an eighth of an eighth inch one. Let's see here. Fold the second one. We have to rescore that one a little bit. At the seven, there we go. And fold that one down. 
So what that gives us is a little bit of space. our flap it help, actually helps it hold it down now we're going to do angle punch on the two corners of the smallest flap at least that's what I'm going to put on mine and then I want two half inch rounded on the two corners of the bigger flap section okay so now we're ready to put that in that pocket and the bigger one goes in and the shorter one is on the top and then this is where you decide where to line it up. And I'm going to bring it down some on this one so that it there's a, about an eighth of an inch of the angle pocket showing and a little bit here at the top. Maybe just bring it up a little more. Maybe, a, maybe make it equal quarter inch at the bottom and a quarter inch at the top. And then we're going to peel the backing off this magnet and press it down. Make sure it's in all the way here on the side. Press that down. Open it up. And now we're ready for the tape right here. And what this does is it holds that flap in place. It'll pretty much lay down on its own. And of course, it sticks through. It's going to stop. When we have this in the book okay so there it is and all we have to do is pattern this and the library pocket and then we're ready for the back side of our page so for the top of our library pocket we need one piece of pattern paper cut at three and seven eighths wide by two and seven eighths tall so I chose another piece of this clock. I'm going to pay attention to my directions. So this is the way I need to put a notch here on this right side. So this was three inches. So one and a half was the center of the three inch piece. So put that in and then I'm going to back this off about sixteenth of an inch. And punch it. So I did do it the right direction. And double check, make sure how it fits. So that's good. Now I'm going to ink it and then we'll glue that on. that piece that had that faded out watercolor looking building with the pretty flowers is my favorite and I think it is but then the clocks are my next favorite and then the one with the roses which we'll be using next is another favorite so I have three definite top runner favorites okay so there we got that Isn't that pretty with it all layered up like that? Of course, we'll have a tag in here, mat. This opens up. Okay, now we're ready to do this. So, we need two pieces that are see, uh, four and three quarters wide. Yep, four and three quarters wide by five and seven eighths tall. So we'll ink these as well. We need two of these. 
and I use two different patterns because one goes on the inside one goes on the outside and I'm putting this with the letter on the stamp I'm putting that on the outside oh, and I forgot we got to do the angle punch so we'll do that and then re-ink those corners Okay, so this is going to go on the front. So our angle punch has got to be on the left side of the paper. Two of them. On the left side of the paper right here. Oh, making sure it does the angle. And then when this one goes in. And the two on the right on this pattern. ink the little corners okay then we just simply glue these on I'm gonna open this up so I can see Pretty, pretty. So then we turn this over, take your score tape backing off the magnet. This one's already inked, so we're ready for the paper, the glue for this one. between the magnet there on the edge and the bottom make sure that there's no gap there okay so there's that love 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 that's so pretty there's the book Whoop, not the book but the page keep forgetting the page isn't in yet but let's see how it looks that's going to slide right in and that magnet's going to hit right there that just holds it in place pulls it in place pretty I like that okay so now we're ready to do this part in here okay so for that we need pattern paper and white cardstock so we cut of the white cardstock we have two that are three and seven eighths five five and seven eighths okay we have those two okay so I found them we have the two card stocks that are the white card stock three and seven eighths by five and seven eighths so we have two of those and then we have two pattern pieces just have to decide which ones you want to use we have two that are the same size that are two and three quarters by six no five and seven eighths sorry two and three quarters by five and seven eighths now I'm going to put the white one towards the fold here and that means I'm going to put one of these on the edge so I have to look at it and for the inside here punch the uh, corner round sorry half inch corner round the two left corners of this piece and then when I flip it I'm going to put the white one to the fold and then this one here so I need to punch the two right corners of the side that I want to see and now we're going to ink those and then we'll glue them in And the 
other one. Okay. Now then, grab your insert and we're going to put this one here towards the fold the white cardstock oh and I'm sorry you're probably hearing my fan blowing it's crazy insane here in Texas it was freezing down one degree a few weeks a month ago <laughs> electricity was not staying on today it is about 80 degrees outside and it's hot and I have a fan blowing on me right now because I'm so hot okay so it makes a little bit of noise I'm gonna turn it off for right now so hopefully you could still hear me I'm sorry about that I didn't I didn't realize I didn't think about it I got hot and I turned it on and, and so this one here pay attention to your direction of your words you're using this that side with the music notes so I'll put that on make sure everybody's going in the right direction corner goes here and here okay all right then we flip it over put a little bit of glue right here on this corner I don't want it catching in my book okay flip it over make sure we're doing the same same thing we're doing the correct direction so this white one goes here and I gave you the measurements on this as um, five and seven eighths but if you think it's a little bit too long just trim it down just a smidge Okay, I may have cut mine at six instead of five and seven eighths. Okay, so this goes here. I need it over a little bit more. Let's see if I can do it real quick or not. I put it too close to the edge. I needed it. I needed a little bit of a margin right there. Okay, that's better. If you think quick enough with your art glitter glue, you can move stuff if you notice it right away. Okay, now this one. Make sure my music notes are going the right direction. Okay. If you wanted to use the opposite side, you could. Okay, there's our insert for our page. Of course, we probably won't uh, put it in until we put the page in the book, but I just want to see what it looks like there. Okay, and then it's just the whole thing comes out. So next we'll be doing the back side of our page, and then we'll be putting it into our book. So we're almost finished except for the decorating. Okay, so we're ready to work on the back side of our main page. So we have the front here. And we're going to flip it over. Now make sure you flip it over so that everything's facing up. So that this is the top. So this is the top side. Lay it right here. Our first piece is going to be a side flap. And we're going to cut one piece of cardstock that's four and a half by seven and seven eighths. And we're going to score our four and a half inch side at a half inch. Now on my prototype, I did not uh, do any angle cuts, but I think on this one, I'm going to do angle cut on my flap just to kind of keep that theme going that I was doing 
on the other side. So there's that. I'm gonna move my trash can where I can dump things in. Okay. So we have that, and we're gonna go ahead. Let's go ahead and fold and burnish that fold line. Now I've already cut my patterned paper for this flap and um, you need two pattern papers that are three and seven eighths wide by seven and three quarters tall. Let me check. Seven and three quarters. Okay, by three and seven eighths. Okay. So let's take a look at it on here. We have two I have two pieces cut. And of course we're going to do the angle punch so i'm looking at my paper i'm going to make sure that my clocks are going the right direction so they're 12 there's your one two so there's there's the top right here so i'm going to angle punch on the right side of the pattern that i want to use There's that one, and then the back side, same size. I'm just deciding which side I like to use. Music notes or the other. Okay, and then this you're going to angle cut the left side of the the left two corners of the pattern that you want to see. Okay, so now let's go ahead and ink those. and glue them on. So now I've already put this one on the inside here, so I'm going to turn this over and we'll attach this one to the front of the flap. So I'm going to go ahead and put glue on this piece. Place it down. and burnish. There we go. There's a clock on that front flap. And this is going to go here on this edge. On the left edge here. So I'm going to go ahead and put this one down. Put the glue on the back of the flap. Double check, make sure I'm going the right direction. So this is the top, flip it over, and I'm putting this on the left side. Line it up the edge of the page, not with this flap. I'm gonna take this flap one out so that we're not confused, or I'm not, I'm not. Take it out for now, and make sure I'm lining it up with the edge of the page here. In the top and the bottom, so that looks good and I'm going to burnish my hinge. Okay, so we've got that. I'm going to set this flap aside with my album cover. So next we're going to make a small flap. And this one here is cardstock. You need one that is four and a half by four. Four and a half by four. And we're going to score the four and a half sides, put that in at the top, we're going to score that at a half inch. Go ahead and fold and burnish. So this is going to attach right here on this section and I'm going to scoot it over so it goes further over like that. So we're going to need to make a string closure here with this one. So we can go ahead and put the pattern paper 
just on the front side. So we have two pieces that are cut pattern paper, three and seven eighths wide by three and seven eighths tall. So we have two of these. One goes on the front, one goes on the back. So I'm going to grab my ink real quick. So for now I'm just going to mat the, set this back one aside, I'm going to mat the front one here. So you want your hinge on the left so you pay attention to the direction of your pattern paper. And I'm going to put it right there. And I was going to round these. So apologize for that. Go ahead if you want to go ahead and round before you actually uh, glue it down. So I need it on the right side of my pattern paper. I'm going to do that real quick before my glue dries. And then I have to clean it out of my tool here. Okay. And now we're going to. I'm messy sometimes. <laughs> And then we're going to go ahead and glue this down right there. Okay, so that looks good. Burnish. And I'm going to decide if I want to go ahead and put this on. I think I'll put it on here. Um, let me check something real quick. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and put this flap down right about there. And then I've also, you're going to need about a half inch, three eighths of an inch to a half inch by three and seven eighths tall piece that's going to go in here. I looked in my scraps and I found one that kind of goes with the mat that I'm going to put on the back to cover this hinge part. You can also do the slip, but you'd have to do that before you touch this paper down. But for this one, I'm just going to set it on top, and then I'm going to cover it with paper. So I'm going to go ahead and put this on. And I'm going to put it along with the line of this paper right here, kind of in the center. Right there. And burnish that. Then I'm going to go ahead and put my little strip in. Because that way I don't want to lose it. And this pattern piece is going to go on after we add our string closure. So just go ahead and touch this one down to that. Don't cover your hinge part. Just like that. So that finishes it off okay. I don't have a problem with that myself. Uh, this one is going to go in like this. So I do need to round these two outer corners and just have it ready to go. And these have been inked, but I'm going to go ahead and re-ink the corner around the rounded corners right there. Okay. So like I said, this is going to glue on after we put our hinge piece on. Okay, so I'm going to set this aside. Uh, next, we're going to make a pocket. So you need cardstock cut you one piece at eight and seven eighths by four and three eighths. And we're going to score the eight and seven eighths inch side at a half inch on each end. So you score it here and then to make it easier for you, just turn it all the way around, score it half inch. And then on the four and three eighths inch side score at a half inch on the bottom to make this pocket. So 
grab your scissors, do the angle cut where the two score lines inter intersect on the bottom edge. Go ahead and fold these up and burnish. Making sure that they don't intersect or don't stack over each other. Don't want it bulky there. Let's burnish those really well. Now this pocket, we're going to go ahead and take our punch board again. Envelope punch board. And I'm going to cut punch at two and a half with it folded. Put it in at two and a half. Punch. Turn it over so that you see the hinges on that side. Put it up at two and a half and punch. We're going to cut that out. I already have my pattern paper, which I cut at three and three quarters wide by seven and three quarters tall. We're going to do the same thing. Now I want it to be like this so you can see the writing. So you're going to do your punching with this side here. So the right side of it. So we're going to put that in at two and three eighths. Punch. Flip it over to the back side. Two and three eighths. And punch. Now we're ready to cut those two out. Now then, we've got this made, but we are not going to put it in to our book. Okay, I need it to trim off a little bit. It's a little bit too wide. So let me lift this up real quick. I'm going to have to do it with my scissors instead of my trimmer. I think I'll be okay. Just about, I don't know, an eighth of an inch, sixteenth of an inch. I mean, just, just a tiny bit. And I can usually do it with my scissors, the big scissors. I have to put some more glue back on it. Let's burn it. Let's ink this up. So dry fit yours before you actually glue it on. You might need to trim just a little bit. better. Okay, so we burnish it to make sure it lays down. And like I said, this is going to go in here under our flap, but I want to wait to attach it, attach it with the main paper piece and our um, string closures. So we have this piece, I want the cherub on the, the right side of the page. So this is cut at a side and it is seven and three eighths wide by seven and three quarters tall. And I'm going to go ahead and ink this. It doesn't need any punching or anything. This is for the main page on the back side. So we'll ink it and then we're going to make our string closures. Now this time, I told you that you could before that I didn't show you that. I just did it with the pattern paper and it's working okay. But if you want it a little stiffer, a little stronger, depends on who's going to be using your album if, if they're going to wrap, unwrap and unwrap the string a lot. So you might want to punch some um, two circles out of the same size out of cardstock and then layer it with the piece of pattern paper. So let me grab all that real quick. I'm going to pause for just a second. Okay, so I've got my circle punch. I went to my scrap basket. I got a piece of the green cardstock. I'm going to punch two of those. This is the one inch punch. And then I have this scrap of the pattern paper. I'm going to punch two of it. And I don't, don't think
think I inked the edges on the other ones, so you can if you want. Let's see, the circles. You don't have to do it on the cardstock, just the these circles here. Kind of finish off the edge. Okay. First thing we're going to do, we're going to glue a piece of the pattern onto this cardstock circle. Make sure you line them up really well. They're the same size, so there's not going to be any of the cardstock really showing, except just a tiny bit on the edges. Let those dry for just a little bit. It doesn't take long with the artist uh, art glitter glue. Sure, sized up good. Okay. Now then, we have this here. We're going to do some marking. I'm going to grab me a marking pen. Okay, so I'm going to want one about here. This is going to go under here. It's going to go through that. So put this where it belongs on your base page. This down. Circle. It's going to go about right there. So it's about a quarter of an inch the edge of the circle so I'm going to put my dot right here and it doesn't have to be perfect I'm just drawing the uh, taking my line over so I can see it I want them straight across from each other so we'll put one here okay so now we're ready to put it all together remember you don't glue them on you lay your circle here I know you can't see your dot that's just going to be a placement for it I'm going to take my punch and setter if you use the big hole turn this so I can keep my hand See, I may have to move this over some. Move it a little bit so my punch matches in there. And that's okay. I'm going to drop the eyelet in. I need my string. Tie my loop. Now the pocket. So open this all up. This is going to fit right in here on that fold line. And I should have angled. When I angle this flap, I'm going to go ahead and do it. It's not going to be perfect. Let's see here. But I don't like that sticking up. So I shouldn't have done. I should have thought of that ahead of time. Just going to angle it and then I'm going to ink it right here. Okay, so I do apologize. My camera turned off, but I cut it, uh, caught it um, before I actually put the page in the album. So that's a good thing. We were at this point here where we were putting the pocket in. So we did. I did show you on the video how to do the string closure, pattern this flap on the inside. And then we opened it up. So all we were doing that you won't see in the video is attaching your pocket. So what you want to do is attach on the back of the hinge, on the top, the 
bottom and the side and make sure you're putting it in so that it's not over the fold of the flap and attach that in. Uh, I did trim off on the left side of my pattern paper for the main page about an eighth of an inch to make sure that I still had my border here on the outer edge. Put glue on the back of it and then carefully slid it in so that it sits over the hinges so we don't have anything uh, hanging in there. So that's really all that was not on the video. So we're going to close this back up and then we're ready to put this into the, the album. So remember we have one hinge. It's a three quarter inch hinge and it's made out of this the Country Craft Creations pattern paper for the Ireland Forever collection, the, the Bristol paper. It feels wonderful. I've, uh, you know, Normally I'm not comfortable with making a hinge out of the pattern paper, but this one I think is going to work fine. I don't see any cracking. It seems to be very strong. So I have this score tape already. We did that earlier on both sides. About an eighth of an inch down, kind of centered. If you have the half inch tape, you're going to put it further to the top a little bit, or to the bottom, I would say, on that. Um, so I'm ready to put the page in. Now pay attention, make sure you're putting it in so that the opening here on the left, you have this one on the front like that. Because this is where our flap's going to go in and catch that magnet there. So I've already dry fit it to make sure. What we're going to do is we're going to peel off a little bit of the tape backing on this side. We press the hinge down on the front. We're working on the front side and just make a tail there. And I'm going to take a little bit of glue. I'm going to run it along the top edge of the hinge right above the uh, score tape. Get my string out of the way. So now we're going to take this one, make sure this pocket, angle pocket, is facing you. And I'm going to open this up. Now, I'm sorry, it's kind of my arm's going to be up in the way or my hand. And I'm just going to fit it over and make sure we're doing it with the pocket opening, the main page opening. And it should fit right over. I'm going to have a little trouble because I'm trying to not be in the way of the camera so much, but it's gonna, there we go. Sits down right over it. Now then, once you get it on there, you're going to make sure it's lined up on each side and it's straight, and you're going to want to sit this about an eighth of an inch, sixteenth and eighth of an inch from the the fold line of that hinge. So when you've got it there, everything is straight. Press down this score tape here, then go ahead and pull on this tail of the backing. Get all that out and then burnish that. I'm gonna lift up this flap. Burnish that so your that glue we added in, a bit of glue, and that score tape is going to stick down really well. So that's the front side. Now oh, flip it back. And here you can take your scissor or pokey tool and you're going to reach in and grab that tape backing. And we're going to pull this out. Go. Pull it all the way. Make sure we get it all out. Okay, and then burnish down this side as well. Really make sure it sticks. Okay, now our page is in. And it flips back and forth. So now let's grab our insert that we have, that we made. And remember it has a magnet closure or attachment to keep it in place. Slide that in and just let it grab right there. So just go ahead and decorate it up, add flowers, ribbons, whatever you want to yours. And so this concludes the tutorial. I'll be adding some tabs and things to my tags here. So that concludes this tutorial for the Ireland Forever Paper Collection 
exclusive to Country Craft Creations. Thank you so much for uh, following along, and I'm excited to start a new project soon for you. So be sure to subscribe to my channel. Uh, click on the bell when you do so that you'll receive notification of my next uploaded video. And make sure you check out countrycraftcreations.com for your uh, crafting supplies. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.